In this video, I'd like to share some general tips from the perspective of a professional musician. These are mostly related to gigging, but if you've got any interest in playing live, then they might be applicable to you. Hey everybody, Jamie Holroyd here helping you learn jazz guitar. Welcome to the channel. If you're new around here and you want a structured guide to learning jazz guitar, then please check out my free beginner jazz guitar guide, which is linked and listed in the description of this video below. Let's get on with the tips. The first tip in regards to being a professional musician that I'd like to share with you is do not noodle. Do not noodle. And what noodle simply means is when you get to a gig or a jam session early, you've set your amp up, you've set your guitar up and you start playing and you don't stop playing. You're not playing the song. You're not organizing a song with anybody else. You just sat there noodling, playing chords. What's the point? It's very unprofessional to do that. Any professional guitar player that I've ever worked with saves all their, you know, noodling or their improv basically just for the actual song itself. So, you know, if you ever get to a jam session or you get to a gig early, set your guitar up, get the sound that you like, play like a couple of notes, a couple of chords, and then set it and leave it. Don't noodle endlessly. It just kind of screams unprofessional uh, to me and amateur guitar player. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip is do not let the general public know that you are in a debt band. Now, if you are a gigging and working musician, then you know you might be in a working band and that's cool, but often if you're a professional musician, then what you often do is what's called a debt gig. And sometimes some professional bands of quite high paying gigs can be compromised of all debt musicians, which actually may not have even rehearsed together, but because they're all professional musicians, they can just get together and work it out and you know sound like they've been playing for years sometimes. Now, the danger of that is actually to let somebody from the general public know that you are actually not a band that's rehearsing. It can just kind of, for someone that's not a musician, create a little bit of insecurity. And I remember one time I was playing a gig and uh, we were just setting up for a gig and I was having a chat with a member. I think it was a wedding function or something like that. And, you know, I jokingly was saying, well, you know, we're not even in a band together, we just kind of get together and played. And then the saxophone player kind of pulled me to one side afterwards and says, you know, dude, don't say things like that because people that are not musicians just won't get it. And it might even make us seem like we're unprofessional. So if you're playing in debt bands or anything like that, just, you know, keep the persona that you are a working band to the public. The next tip which I'd like to share with you is to always carry spare strings, spare leads, things like that, especially strings and guitar leads because they are perhaps the most prone to maybe getting lost or broke. What I do is, it's, it's not really a conscious effort because uh, in the boot or trunk, as Americans say, of my car, I basically just have a spare guitar lead which is always in the trunk. I should probably throw a couple of sets of strings there as well it's not even a conscious effort then, because if you say, for example, leave a set of strings in a gig bag, well, if you take another guitar out to a gig or a jam session, then, you know, you might have to take the strings out of one gig bag and, in, and then put them in another gig bag. So what I always say to do is just basically leave a spare set of strings in your car, leave a spare lead in your car. That way it's basically there if you break a string on a gig, which is very, very unlikely. It's only ever happened to me once many years ago, and that was when I was playing a rock gig, so I was probably bending more strings and playing with a harder attack anyway. So it's never happened on a jazz gig, but it's nice to know that you've got a spare lead or spare strings if you unfortunately break the string on the gig. The next tip kind of carries on from the previous one, and that is that you should always bring an extension cable when you're playing live. At least here in the north of England, there's a lot of older buildings and all the pubs and dance halls and stuff that you might find yourself playing at, which really don't have many plug sockets. And sometimes if they do, they're not where you as a band are playing. If you're playing at one side of the room and the plug sockets are at the other, then it could be game over really. And you'd be surprised if you have maybe a guitar player, keyboard player, electric bass player, then, you know, these plug sockets can really quickly become occupied fast. And, you know, you can be kind of stuffed really for lack of a better term. So what you want to do is always carry an extension cord with you. Um, the best one that's the most robust solution is typically the ones that um, most British people will use when they're gardening or maybe cutting their grass. They're basically the ones that have massive long cables. At least, you know, you've always got enough cable that way if you're playing in a particularly big venue. It's uh, 
only happened to me once or twice and luckily at one time that it happened there was also a dj playing the set i think after the band so um, it was a get out of jail card but it was definitely a lesson well learned the next tip is a very general piece of advice and it's especially useful for musicians and that is to learn to drive I've kind of been on both sides of this because I don't think I passed my test until I was 25 or something like that. So when I was gigging a lot back in the day, I was kind of using public transport a lot. And yeah, it's not ideal, at least here in the north of England. Maybe it's different if you live in London or a city with a, a good tube system. But I was always compromising on what amps I was bringing, what gear I was bringing, you know, constantly working around bus times, um, you know messing around with taxes and things like that and it was really hard to sometimes to keep a professional service as a musician without having a car really and the thing is even if you're kind of you know reliant upon if there may be other members in your band that drive and stuff well you know i guess it's fair to say that if you are a driving musician even if the other guy is giving you petrol money or something like that then, you know, if you're finishing a gig quite late and, you know, if you want to get home and, you know, you're up early the next morning or you've got a family or something like that, then kind of la the last thing that you want is to be, you know, driving to the other end of where you live, dropping someone else off and getting back extra, you know, if, if you know, getting back later than what you already would anyway. So, yeah, learn to drive if you haven't already and uh, that will definitely open up more doors when it comes to gigs. The next tip that I'd like to share with you is to learn the common repertoire that comes up time and time again. Now, this is kind of a jazz channel, a jazz guitar channel. So, you know, if you're a jazz guitar player, there are certain standards that just get played all the time that you really want to try and learn as soon as you can, really. Autumn Leaves, Blue Bossa, Fly Me to the Moon, Girl from Ipanema, Green Dolphin Street, Beautiful Love. A number of jazz standards like that you can just google you know the 10 most important jazz standards or something similar to that and you'll find a list of all those songs to work on but the same could be said for like function set lists you know if you're playing with a wedding band then there are certain songs that come up over and over again in wedding bands that you really are just better off memorizing even if they're not to your taste like valerie by amy winehouse uptown funk by uh, bruno mars Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinnerd, uh, Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry. There are loads of them, really. But there is, you know, having played in a couple of bands like that, I have found that there are a few songs that are really just worth learning. And from a guitar perspective, especially ones which have faffy riffs, which you really don't want to be reading because they're quite difficult to read. So one example of uh, a song like that would be something like Mr. Brightside, by the killers you know that's just one that is you're kind of better off just learning to get through the gig unless you're a kind of dynamite sight reader so that would be the next tip would be learn the common repertoire for the style that you want to play if it's jazz learn the standards if you want to play in function bands and be a depth guitar player then find out what those songs are i've already mentioned a couple and if you want to be a country guitar player then you know working man blues and all those kind of you know country hits are, are worth learning too the next tip is basically kind of the opposite of what I've just said, and this is to not memorize niche songs. Don't memorize niche songs. I've kind of been in this, uh, I've been guilty of this myself early in my gigging career. So around 10 or 11 years ago, I basically got asked to do a depth gig for a soul band, really good soul band, um, nice guitar player that was playing, he couldn't make the gig for whatever reason. So I got asked to do the gig and um, this gig was like a £50 gig, so $60, $70 gig um, at a bar um, here in Leeds. And, you know, that might seem like a lot, but believe me, um, you know, once you consider if you're playing a two or three hour gig, you get in there, get in back and you put a price per hour on your time, you know, it, it might not seem as much as, you know, what it once did at £50 for the gig. Especially if you did what I do, which was basically I had, I had a list of songs and I tried to memorise all of these songs and some of them kind of you know going back to my previous point were common repertoire things that come up all the time like uh, Superstition by Stevie Wonder I think was in there and play that funky music and th there was a few other kind of songs like that which you know probably 
um, were worth learning back then. However, there were a few kind of niche Thor songs which I've never played since, and I spent ages kind of memorizing them, working on them, working on soloing over them. And don't get me wrong, that's not necessarily a waste of your time, but if you're thinking about this from being a professional, um, what I've done since then is if I ever encounter songs like that in a band, basically niche songs, songs that I don't think I'll be playing on a regular basis, I just get Ariel Pro, get a chord chart, listen to the song once or twice at home, have a play for it, make sure I know it. And that really kind of uh, speeds up the process, really. And obviously, you know, if I play the songs on more than one gig or whatever, then I might take a more serious approach. But, you know, you, you'll never know and you'll still look professionally. You just might have to have, you know, a music stand in the corner just so you can glance over at the chords, which has really never been a problem in my experience. The next tip which I'd like to share with you is to learn a few classical pieces. And this is, you know, I, I think everybody should learn at least a little bit of uh, classical music, really. If you're looking to improve your picking and your reading, then, you know, things like violin studies are really, really um, great for doing that because they generally have, you know, consistent rhythms and you're working on your pitch. Um, and generally, it's just beautiful music to play as well. It's kind of very rewarding music. But from what I've found in a gigging perspective, I've done a couple of solo guitar gigs where sometimes the classical pieces really counter the jazz standards nicely and they're quite refreshing to have in a set of jazz standards. And there was one specific gig that was a very well paid gig, a solo gig that I did for a wedding years ago. And um, what I did then was I had to basically learn a few classical pieces for that. And, you know, even now I just have a few in my repertoire and I'm not a classical guitar player by any stretch of the imagination. I wish I was, but it can really kind of just open your doors a little bit. You don't necessarily have to learn a full set of classical music, but just knowing a few classical songs can really kind of, you know, get you out of trouble sometimes and open up a few more doors, which might not be possible otherwise. The next tip is perhaps one of the hardest to develop. It's one of those that you can only really learn on the bandstand, and that is to work on your musicianship. Knowing about intros, endings, dynamics, basically getting through a song and making sure it doesn't fall apart, those are things that I guess you can work on to a degree, especially things like intros and outros, but you really have to get as much playing experience, as much gigging experience as possible, and you'll realise that the show always has to go on, at least in a professional live setting. So that would be that tip. Develop your musicianship. And eventually what you'll find, um, some of the best musicians that I know, they can just get out of any situation. They can be playing with like, you know, perhaps an amateur or beginner level guitar player and they will always find a way to sound good and get through situations 90% of the time because their musicianship is basically indestructible. The next essential tip is to learn the song Happy Birthday. That has probably been my most requested song as a jazz player, as a general guitar player. It really is just worth learning and you know, if you're a jazz guitar player then I've got a lesson that you can check out. I've got a chord melody that you can learn for Happy Birthday. Um, at least know the chords, uh, maybe even the melody itself because that can get you some really good tips and really just kind of usually um, keep whoever is organising the gig happy and it's quite embarrassing sometimes you know to not know that it's only a three chord song really and um, you know if you know all these complicated jazz standards and all these you know cool things then you know sometimes if you can't hear or get around a basic tune like that it can be quite embarrassing <laughs> so if you don't know happy birthday then check that out learn that it will definitely come up at some gig at some point in the future so it's better just to learn it now so that you know it the next tip is one that I learned when I was a student at Leeds College of Music from one of the lecturers there. <laughs> it's a little bit of a cheeky tip, but I, I think it kind of stands, so it's worth sharing. So basically, if you get a call for a gig or something like that, if you're calling someone for a gig and uh, they answer the phone and you know you say to them, okay, when are you available for this gig? And they say, anytime. I'm a professional musician, I've got every week free, every weekend free. When do you want me? I've got nothing planned, no students, no gigs, no work. Then, you know, at least for me, that, that, that could potentially raise alarm bells. Unless you know the person really well and there's an exceptional circumstance, you know, you're kind of thinking, why is this person so free and available? It's, uh, you know. Um, so basically this uh, college lecturer, the tip that he gave us was, uh, even if you have got nothing, because back then we were all students and we were just getting started, um, he said but one tip would be just, you know, 
he said, just use a simple phrase, let me check my diary, let me check my calendar, see when I'm free, see when I'm available. And even if you just kind of say that and you are very available and you just rustle a few pages, it just kind of seems more professional, doesn't it? So yeah, um, thank you to the LCM lecturer that shared that one. I've always thought that was a great tip that I may have been guilty of using once or twice myself when I was less busy. The next tip which I'd like to share with you is to always use good earplugs. It's so easy to neglect your hearing basically as a musician. I think it's potentially less of a problem now that everyone's using in-ear monitors because the levels of music and everything seem much more controlled in that context. But if you're kind of using amps and you're just kind of, you know, playing loud, then I, I kind of sound like an old man. But tinnitus and all those kind of, you know, hearing loss and hearing problems, it's, you know, really, it can be really depressing and it can really get you down. And it's not something that you think about until it happens. So yeah, thankfully one of the best pieces of advice, is, of advice that was given to me as a student was to get some nice molded earplugs if you're playing in loud situations. If you're in this for the long game, then you want your hearing to last. You know, there's nothing worse than working with someone that doesn't have good hearing because they haven't taken care of their ears. You know, it's what we need more than our eyes as musicians. So we should really kind of take care of our ears. The last point is about gear and it's to take out gear that you are comfortable with. If you're playing a gigging situation, you need to know your gear inside out, really. It's not a time to start getting to know different amps and different pedals, or you don't want to be the guy that's kind of, you know, causing delays between songs. You need to know your gear inside out, really. Maybe one or two guitars that you know all the sounds with, um, maybe one or two amps. You do not want to be kind of, you know, hoarding gear and getting used to gear on a gig. It's happened to me once or twice. and. You know, sometimes you have got to test gear on a gig and sometimes you'll be using a new amp and it, you know, it might let you down. So there's always an, an element of kind of, the, you know, risk that you've got to do with gigs. But generally speaking, especially in a high pressured situation, then, you know, use something that you feel comfortable with. There's, you don't want to be thinking about gear at all when you're playing really. It wants to be in the back of your mind. So that would be my last tip would be to use gear that you're comfortable with. Okay, that concludes these tips. I hope that they help you out. Which ones have I missed? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please give the video a like and subscribe to this channel.